Hey folks, George Leoniak, New Geometry. I'm back with another video and super, super duper excited to be sharing this one with you. Uh, this is going to be a follow-up video to the Golden Chestahedron video that I did just prior to this. You know, I sent that video off to Frank Chester uh, that day that I put it out. And within a couple hours, he emailed me back. So we had some great correspondences over the week. Uh, he gave me some clues and some hints to look for the dual form because in that previous video, you know, here's the chestahedron and uh, it's a seven sided form. And throughout this video, I'm just gonna really encourage you to check out Frank's work with the chestahedron because I'm not gonna go into all the implications the chestahedron has because he's done that to the max. Uh, it's just a form that relates to the geometry of the human heart uh, and also to the, the, the earth. Uh, so I would highly recommend checking out Frank's videos on all of that. I, in, in, in my um, featured channels, I have uh, his channel listed there. So please, please check that out. But like I said, we had some great conversations. This was kind of what I was considering the dual form. Um, I'll show you some images of this in the slideshow. Uh, but he had the Decatria. And of course, I knew of that in Frank's book, the Decatria, uh, because the uh that's the dual form that he discovered so i had no idea how to create that but just from a brief conversation that we had and just a couple hints here and there i went on to really work out and figure out how to discover that now it's going to be about the decatria but i want you to know that there's going to be some amazing material in here on how all this connects to the flower of life patterns the seed of life flower of life that whole hexagonal uh structure these forms are going to be fully integrated into that and it's like uh the flower of life is um it has a has a new uh life to it let's just say okay because we brought the chestahedron and the decatree into that so you know you could don't skip ahead uh, to the end to where I start to get into more of that because you might not know what I'm talking about. So just work through the video, take pauses if you need. I think this one's going to be one of the ones that has really tied a lot of things together for me. All right, so I just want to start off. Um, first, I want to show you an image in Frank's book because during our conversation with Frank, he uh, he pointed out this picture in his book. This is uh, Frank's book here, uh, A New Sacred Geometry. I love that it's the NEW. And uh, of course, I've got the KNEW sacred geometry going on here. Um, so Frank Frank said, hey, you know, check out this image on page uh, 32 or 20, 22 in the book here. And, uh, you know, he's like that. It says here it's like a two dimensional geometry. And I'm, I've had this book for like four years. And I remember looking at this two dimensional geometry of the chestahedron. And my mind just, you know, couldn't comprehend what was going on with this uh, pattern here. So he called my attention to this pattern again of the five stars and all the circles. And he's like, yeah, the chest, do you see the chestahedron in there? I'm just like, yeah, Frank, I, you know, I'm just not, I'm not seeing it right away. I'm not sure what's going on there, really. He's like, just check that out. I think you're really going to like it. So, you know, that evening, um, you know, after the conversation, taking it all in, I was like, okay, let, let me just start checking out. So this is where we're going to start with the Chestahedron template here. And, you know, it, it, if you want to try and figure that one out on your own, take a look at Frank's book, but this is kind of like spoilers to, uh, to, to a movie. But when you do discover these things on your own, uh, then all of a sudden they integrate in a way that you've never uh, would have known if someone just tells you how it kind of comes together. But, you know, for the purpose of this video, I'm just describing my process. So please join me with that journey. Um, okay, so I'm going to share the screen. And here's the presentation. So Okay, so here's the image that you know I came up with. I sent it off to Frank. He took, you know, he took a look at it, and yeah, that's that's what it is going on there. Um, and it wasn't just like I could just start drawing circles on this page because Frank based this right off the Vesica Pisces right here in the middle, these kind of orange lines right in the middle, and that was the starting point of the whole drawing. You know, and it took me quite a while to figure out how do I get these other circles to create these five stars that are rotated in this orientation and where is the chestahedron in this, you know. So I'm sitting, you know, I'm puzzling and puzzling and puzzling and then it just kind of dawned on me, you know what, I'm just going to go back to what I usually work with, which is these circles, the red and the blue, the small ones, 
uh, the blue circle here and the red one, let's just, maybe they're in the phi relationship. And if you've seen my pri prior videos, I often discuss uh, about, you know, the red circle and the blue circle being in phi relationship. So if this is one, this is 0.618, the distance between them. So the whole diameter of the large blue circle is 1.618. And magically, when I started to apply that, all of a sudden, I was like, oh my gosh, I've got the pattern. It's starting to reveal itself. It took a little figuring out how to, how to get it going on all the way. But I just love that Frank, all he had to do is just say, hey, check that out. I think you're really going to like it. Because I talk about these five relationship circles in my video, uh, the prior one that I sent him. And then it was kind of like, oh, I could see why he thought I'd like that. But this is something Frank discovered more than, I don't know, 15 or 12, 20 years ago. And, and it was like, oh, this is something I discovered just kind of in the field. And he was already ahead of the curve with this and integrating into this. So, so where's the chestahedron in this? And it's amazing because, you know, I haven't watched all Frank's videos, even in the past. I watched maybe two or three videos. It was enough inspiration for me at that point, you know, to start building forms. I made a lot of chestahedrons. I worked with like this lovahedron shape, which I tried to do the same thing with four kites on the form. Uh, and figuring out stuff like that. It just really, you know, inspired me, but I didn't watch all his videos. So just last night, you know, I'm just checking out some videos that are on the channel and it's like a magic trick. And, you know, it, it, you know, Frank has this image printed up, the same one that's in the book there. And all of a sudden he, you know, he's talking to the audience and then he just grabs onto the chestahedron. I highly recommend checking out that video and just peels off the chestahedron right out of the middle and then just folds it up right before your eyes. So this is the template for the chestahedron and how it is connected to the kites that are connected to the triangles because it's seven sides, right? So we got the triangle, equilateral triangle in the middle. We've got the three that will fold up around. And then we have the three kites, which are part of the stars, right? So that is um, that was just like pure magic to me but then it was also like, well, geez, if I just would have watched the videos that he'd done, he would have seen it. But you know what? This was better for me to go through the process and see how it integrates into the material that I'd been discovering on my own. So, um, so this is one of the versions of the chestahedron layout that you could do it, but easily drawn with just two diameter circles, all in phi relationship, which is, this is gonna come back to us again when we go to visit the, um, the other views of the chestahedron as we're drawn. So here's the chestahedron from three different, three different views. And this diagram is just from one of my previous slideshows where I've been talking about one method of how I like to divide the circles, uh, you know, to get these circles. Uh, check out some of my other videos of one of the last few that I've done. Uh, and then, I, you know, I just put in the LO divided by the V gives you 1.618. So I had to use a lot of love to figure this one out for sure. And it was an excellent process to go with. So, um, you know, that was just mystery number one that uh, Frank presented for me. Because then, you know, in that same conversation, we went on to talk about, well, what's going on with the form that I was working with? Because, you know, I put a chestahedron right inside this as well. And I figured I could just do that by just truncation of the uh, edges here or the, the vertices. I was just working with the vertices. Um, but Frank brought it to my attention. Well, you know, you really have to work with the edges to get the decatria uh, for the dual form. So, you know, then it was like, okay, so how do I modify what I've come up with, what I just figured out. Because what I did, you know, in my, in my process discovery and sending off the video was all on the, the golden hexagon. And, and hold on, I just want to jump back to this other slide because there was something I didn't quite fully express that I was like, what is it? It's on the tip of my tongue. In my video of the golden chestahedron, um, and this is great to clarify because this is stuff that Frank and I talked about, you know, he, he, he of course he knew about the golden chestahedron, as I called it, with the kites that are based on the golden, uh, the golden uh, pentagram here, you know, the, the pentagram star points, you know, because here it is, this is how he did it. But he, 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 he got challenged to really, and he wanted to create some form that was seven sides, that has all equal area, that was a transitionally form, just like, you know, like one of the platonic solids, 
like from the square to the octahedron. And so, you know, he slightly modified, you know, these slightly modifications to these angles, which are not in this drawing, but in the one that he presented um, that was equal area faces so that it fit into the, uh, the, the larger scheme of the way mathematicians and uh, people who are very well versed in geometry to group it within all those platonic solids. But it's such a like half a degree difference. It will change all these angles. It won't be able to draw it just like this. Um, but it's, so it's like, it's not like Frank knew about that. And, and I wasn't presenting that in that video at all. I'm for sure he knew about this. I'm the one who didn't know about it because when I looked at this drawing years ago, uh, and even probably thumbing through the book before the golden chest dehedron video, it was just like uh, an illusion to me. I couldn't see what was there. So Frank really opened up my eyes on this and just wanted to clarify that in the video. So, you know, I'm just going on with my golden hexagon, you know, explorations and the golden hexagon here, there's three, there's two versions that I worked with of the golden hexagon where this is, let's say one, and now this would be the 0.618 edge along here. So that's one version and there was another version and I had to group both those versions together to figure out how to create this form. I, it was a great process of discovery and it actually gave me the dividing line, a very important place that we're gonna talk about on the chestahedron later on about how a central hexagon is created in it. And actually I did discover that line through the process I went through. But, you know, so Frank was, you know, uh, I sent some images to him. I said, Frank, is this what you mean? And he's like, no, oh, just move all those points and, and the edges to the central point. That was the only thing he gave me. And I sent them this email, long email with a picture, a few words, move them all to the center. And I was like, well, how do I do that? Because it's not like I'm taking the form and able to just slide things around. I Just so you know, like every single one of these drawings that you see here, I do basically on you know, the iPad by hand. It's not like um, I have a program that I could just um, rotate this form around. I have to discover every single view you see here to how to draw that view from that perspective as if you're doing it just with the comp ruler and compass. So it's not some AutoCAD program. So it's like, how do you just slide this edge all the way down to create the Decatria? because oh, that's that's the name and deca tria has to do with uh deca 10 and the tria part is three so you put the two together and that's the 13-sided form so the deca tria is a 13-sided form and the chestahedron is a seven-sided form so the dual is the 13-sided form which you know frank first discovered the chestahedron and discovered the dual afterwards so here it is, it's shared, it's right on the face, this pentagon face is right on the face of the, uh, the kite, the, the long star petal from the five-pointed star. And this uh, Superman symbol is right within the uh, triangular face. Now uh, you'll see in other views, I only have three of the views laid out here for you. Right at the base of this is just an equal, is a regular equilateral triangle. So you have 12 faces, you know, from all these different views that you're looking at. And then just like there's a triangle at the bottom of the chestahedron here, there's also a triangle at the bottom of the chestahedron. I mean, the, uh, the, deca, the decatria. So, you know, here are the views uh, once again, and, you know, I put these in a sphere to, uh, and, you know, by finding these two points that are on it, that are actually touching the surface of the sphere at this point, because this is the length of the triangle from the base all the way up to the top point. So, you know, it, you know Frank and I were discussing, it's, hard, it's often difficult for people to make that jump from these 2D forms to this 3D uh, view, right? But this is really how ge sacred geometry stretches you in that regards, it stretches the imagination. You get the ability to start to, you know, see the form like this and then rotate it like that and then rotate it like this in the mind's eye, right? So you make that jump from your 2D to the 3D viewing. And then hopefully these image is kind of provide that how much the perspective changes. And, and throughout all my videos, I've always discussed all my drawings, I usually do from at least three or two or more perspectives so that you can see the full gamut of what it looks like. Because each of those views provide a little bit of a different information than any one view would alone. So, but here was the big test coming up. It was like, okay, 
you know, at this point, I, I've been sending Frank images and I haven't heard from him at all. And I'm like, man, maybe Frank just thinks I went off the deep end because what am I? <laughs> I just keep going through this information like lightning fast. Really, within that conversation on Friday by Saturday night, I had sent them all these images. And it was like, okay, he hasn't responded. So I have to discover this on my own to see if that's truly the Decatria. So what I did was I had to make the chestahedron, once again, the same chestahedron and see if it fits inside the Decatria. And now my, you know, my heart is throbbing, you know, <laughs> no wonder because it's the chestahedron is the heart is pumping away um, because it's, you know, that's the chestahedron represents the heart here. And, and is, is, the, is it going to be in this Decatria? So, you know, what I had to do once again is like, well, I have to find out the base of this little tiny chestahedron, how big it is. And I know that this vertice right here has to touch this wall of the, de de the Decatria down here, because that's a flat face. That's got to be touching. As I bring this up, well, it's got to meet at the top of the Decatria, because they share the same vertice at the top. So, you know, here's the length of the kite. So I did that, okay, they're touching. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same angle as the large one, you know, right there. And then now this is the critical point. I bring this, I know what the length of that triangle is. So I bring it over, it's, you know, parallel to the base. And then I take my, you know, my, my compass uh, on, and I swing it up to see if this length, because this, is, this has got to be equal to that because these are the same triangle in view, right? This is the same triangle. That has to be this one here. And you swing that up. And if that does not absolutely touch that line, if it's a little over or if it's a little under, and I go in there as close as I can and resolve that with like, you know, cross hash marks and seeing if it lights up blue, making all the angle measurements and all that. Because as Frank says, you don't want to cheat this. This is something that's going to way outlast me that anybody can ever do in the future. This is lawful, as Frank said, that's a word to use, you know, that this is what sacred geometry is about. It's this lawful uh, expression of the geometric art form. I'm not putting any of myself in this, you know, I just, if this didn't come out, well, then I have to scrap that. This whole thing, all the images, five images I'd sent Frank at that point, I got to go back to the drawing board, but yay, it fits. It's right there in front of you the whole time you knew that. But I'm just trying to describe how the thrill of doing this and discovering, making the discovery for myself. So. I call up Frank, I send him these images, you know, then I send him these and he's like, he, he calls me up and is just like, I can't, you know, I can't believe what I'm seeing. This is me. You figured out the net. And he's like, I could have just sent it to you. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? You could, you know, it, but he didn't send it and he didn't send it for these reasons, I, I, I believe. And that's what it sounded like. It's just because I wouldn't have the connection to the form. In fact, when I first learned about the Chestahedron, four years ago, within a year, I was working with the forms and doing all this. And I was like, I, know, I couldn't figure out how to do the Decatria at that point. You know, this is just a real expression of how much I've grown in that amount of time. I would never have been able to figure it out. So I just, I wrote email, Frank an email and said, hey, do you have the Decatria? I'd really like to make it. And he said, you know, at that point, oh, he's still in the works of putting it together or whatever, or something like that. It's not available yet. So that was my first interaction with Frank three years ago. He did reply, which was great because sometimes I get no reply from a lot of people I reach out to. So th then now I have a real connection to this form that I would have never had before, just like doing the previous three Pentagon drawing as well. You do it, you have the connection to it. It lives inside you then, um, literally, because the Chestahedron, of course, and Frank's work on the heart lives inside us. So um, here's the, uh, so I made the, I made the net for it and I, you know, built the chest, the, the Decatria right here and it fits into this size uh, chestahedron right here. And I left these lines on the chestahedron that indicate exactly where the Decatria is in there. And it just, you see, that's the bottom of it, uh, you know, where it would sit flat with that equilateral face. And this is what it would be looking at, looking straight down. And we're gonna to get to this view a lot because this is gonna really connect us to the flower of life and to the seed of life and all of that. So I'm really looking forward to sharing all that. So yeah, just stick with me on all that. So yeah, built the Decatria, sent it off. And then, you know, after sending these off, then, then Frank got back to me and it was, you know, then, then we've had a few more correspondences after that. 
Um, but so I kept going with it, you know, because um, I loved, you know, and this, this right here, what you see these images I did this past summer, um, inspired by Frank, because what I saw Frank do in one of his videos was he got these plastic spheres and he just put the uh, chestahedron right into the sphere and the cubes and everything like that. So this summer I said, you know what, I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to buy some of these plastic spheres, whatever diameter they are, I just have to work with that. So this was, so I had to, one part of my, my training here, you know, the tests that I put myself through as a geometer is how am I going to adjust all the measurements for all these platonic solids and put them inside these spheres? Because these are not all going to nest together at this point because they're all different. So I had to come up and figure out the math and the internal angles to fit it in this given diameter sphere. So, and I mean, of course, I'm not doing wire structures. I just had to print it all out and do it out of paper. Um, but here, and then this is a very elemental expression and connection to all the elements through this process, because of course, the five platonic solids connect to the different elements as they have always been described, you know, um, probably prior to the time of, of Greece, but they have the, the connection to these platonic solids to the elements. So of course, we've got the, uh, the tetrahedron here, which is in the fire, right? And uh, we've got the earth, you know, the rock and the grass and the plants and everything surface of the earth, the cube in the sphere and the octahedron, you know, representing the air, the life-giving oxygen of the trees. Here, this was taken immediately like pitch black night, you know, um, the, the ether and the uh, dodecahedron and the water of the uh, casahedron here. So, you know, it's so cool because once you start working with these platonic solids, they're transforming you. This is, this is an alchemy that's going on. And when I just started watching Frank's video again with like new ears and eyes after all that I've done on my own um, it, and, and doing these types of processes, he puts the chestahedron through an alchemical process. I mean, the actual form itself, that's how he discovered the geometry of the heart uh, of being part of that um, uh, alchemical, pro alchemical process, you know, of looking at the minimum surfaces by dipping it in the water and blowing bubbles. You just have, you have to watch his videos to see what he, he did with that form and how he went through this alchemical transitions to, to look at it from every, um, not just from straight lines, but you'd be amazed what the chestahedron will look like through the element of fire, or through the element of water or earth, you know? So those videos are just fantastic. And I'm not, I'm not gonna try and duplicate all that, but I, I will um, do this because, and, and I got like kind of lucky here. And then this, uh, this uh, I love this when this happens, it just makes things easier because I don't have to figure out how to scale the chestahedron. But the chestahedron that I built prior um, for my previous golden chestahedron video, well, just so happens, you know, those same spheres that I use for the platonic solids that I put all them in, just happen to be the same size, very close. I had to do a little, little smidge of a smush, but not much, good enough for me um, to, to at least illustrate what the chestahedron look like in the sphere, right? So, um, and that was important because after now revisiting Frank's work, he in his video that I just watched recently was saying um, that, you know, it kind of always bothered him that the chestahedron only had uh, four of the points in contact with the sphere. And, you know, he was always wondering about, well, what's up with those three, you know? Um, so, but then he put it in the sphere, you know, and then all of a sudden it, it made sense. It dawned on him. And, and this is how we're going to get to how, this is going to start to relate to the flower of life in a second. Because at the center of this, and I'll show you some slides, but if you, if you look at this image here, let's go back to the image. I won't try and show you on this one. I'll show some of these at the end of the presentation. If you're looking at this image, um, there's actually three lines, one, two, three. Now, those are a regular hexagon that's in the middle. There's, uh, uh, there's the, the uh, golden hexagon, or excuse me, this, this one will create a hexagon around this place. But when I was doing this, I was dividing this line into different places that would create a hexagon on that triangular face. So one of these creates a hexagon on the triangular face. One creates the golden triangle, uh, a golden hexagon at the larger perspective. And one creates the golden hexagon at a smaller one. And right here, this horizontal line, so this cuts the sphere in half, you'll notice that one of those three lines, the lowest one, is the dividing place that, that uh, divides the chestahedron right in half, okay? 
uh, within a sphere. So all of a sudden worrying about, well, how's it fit in the sphere? Like, where is it gonna go? Well, that is really important because that central location, when you're looking straight down at the top of the chestahedron, like I'm showing in this right here, so this is the same thing. These are the images I did from the golden chestahedron video, but I'm gonna, I'll use them here. There is, you see the star in the middle, right? It's a six pointed star. And we have one edge, which is blue, this dotted one, which we, we can't see because it's kind of back behind the edge of the chestahedron. And then the blue one, the dotted one, the blue one, the dotted one. Well, those are all equal in their edge length. So that means that this is a, this is a, a, a hexagon with 120 degrees. So it's a perfect hexagon. It's right there at that dividing line right here within the chestahedron divided in the sphere in half. It happens to rest right on that line which you know, is just pure magic that that will just come out just like that with the star right in the middle of the form. So you know, I did that with my, uh, you know, I also came up to that star. Of course, I went about my process in it differently because I was using this golden uh, hexagon along here. And my, mine is the lowest one here that kind of goes all the way around. And I'll just, I'm gonna do a little bit of a uh, review because I just think these slides are very cool of uh, what we saw in the previous video, the golden one, because this was an awesome discovery. And I think, you know, Frank really loved this one, you know, too. And, and I loved it because it was both uh, a new discovery to both of us that when you take that template that I showed prior, this one right here, all you need is one, two, three triangles. And excuse me, this should be a triangle, but it's the hexa golden hexagon. So you need these four triangles and three kites, right? So that's the seven. And you know, when I put them together like this, I discovered, well, that it makes 15 division of the uh, a circle. You know, so 15 and uh, 15 segments all the way around here. And that will then give you the opportunity to build five chestahedrons right out of that, right? So in my prior video, you know, I showed a version where I got, you know, colored that up and made it really creative and showing you the kites in this color. And that then matches this chestahedron, which is right at the heart of this, this design, right at the center with uh, these colors corresponding to those. And the blue triangle, you just have to picture is on that puckered outside or that sloped outside that we can't see. So um, because the, the, the chestahedron from the top view is, is like a little flared out. It's like, it's like a, here's a wire tetrahedron. And I made another little wire tetra uh, chestahedron. It's like, it's like this, this, uh, this just starts to open up, you know, the, the, the picture of the, the, the tetrahedron just opening up and until it reaches the point where you slot in one of these kites. And that's, that's one way to, to kind of visualize this. So during this week, I decided, um, well, I really liked the colors, you know, and I really liked how it was with all the lines and, and all, all that meant to me at that point. But then I decided, well, I'll just, I'll do the same image pretty much with the, the Decatria outline. You can't see the internal Decatria because it's tucked down in there, but that will leave just like um, on this chestahedron here, it will leave that little Pentagon face and the little Superman symbol on the outside here, right? So this is pretty much the same, you know, it's very similar to the same image, but now it's including the outline of the Decatria around it. So just uh, like, like I like to do with this, I do like to add a little bit of the flavor, a little bit of color to it, just because it helps work all the elements of my uh, relationship to this from building the forms to the artistic side, to the math and the science and all that. Uh, so sacred geometry, you know, brings all that together. In, in these micro ways to our human body type of way, to the earth way, to the universe way. And that's, that's just uh, what a gift, you know, to be part of that pattern language, um, experience that pattern language and, and then discuss it with someone like Frank who really loves this stuff just as much as I do. Um, so the, uh, the Decatria, uh, so, you know, I made the net of the Decatria and, you know, when I just, during the discovery process of the net, I, I focused on like these angles. So this is just a little part of the Decatria net. Um, and that's this blue line that's going here and blue line here. And that little lines, those two lines. Now this is going to, when you take these two blue, two red, two black, 
Well, this was a major shocker to me. The decatria shares that same hexagon that the chestahedron has back here. So the chestahedron, remember that's a big central hexagon I was just talking about in the star? Well, it actually is the same division point that the uh, decatria has here. And this little angle right here is 144 degrees. So that's 72 times two. So it's 144. And well, then that means that when I, I could do three decagons right on here, right? Because here's a decagon, there's a decagon, there's a decagon. They just come together in this kind of unusual looking type of pattern. But the net itself speaks to the geometry because the, it, it, and this is something I kind of had a little thought about too. It's like the chestahedron was built out of those, the five pointed geometry, the pentagons, right? Well, the decatria for some reason, had this deca decagon. So once you start working with phi, it's going to show up in your, uh, your net of your uh, decatria. So decatria is totally true to its name because it's not only 10 and 3, 13 for 13 sides, but actually the net itself produces three decagons, which is 30. Uh, you know, So you have three decagons, 3 and 10 again. So, and, and, but now, now we're gonna get into the seed of life and the flower of life, because when you fold this up, these, the blue and the red, you just take that and you bring them together and all of a sudden you get the hexagon and now we're gonna get in the seed of life. But just prior to that, I have one other slide to share because Frank was just so gracious and so kind to send one of his awesome sculptures um, that you know, he sent it, and this is a decatria from one view. This is one of those. Um, I'll show you what face we're looking at there. That's this kind of uh, ninety degree edged pentagon right here down at the bottom. So it's got five sides, and we're looking at that, and then we're looking at the the long um, one of the long pentagon faces there. So you know, when you watch Frank's video, like I said earlier on, or any of his videos, you know, he is a real master at this. You know, he. He's going to surprise you with things. He's going to pull stuff out of like a magic hat. He's going to open up a sphere and it's going to present something else. He's going to pull off a blanket and it's going to be this, you know. It's like uh, you're in for quite a treat, you know, to watch because he's, as being a trained sculptor, he taught sculpture for over 30 years. You know, he didn't, it, it, it's an amazing story. He'll tell it some of his own words, but he, you know, didn't really get into building sacred geometry or working with sacred geometry until he was about uh, around 58 or 60 or something like that. And then all of a sudden it just exploded for him and he had every type of skill you could ever imagine to build anything, right? He could build any, any, anything, right? From welding to uh, sculptural forms to casting, whatever it had to be, he could do it. So he's a perfect person to bring the seven-sided form in um, and the 13-sided form. So he sent this one over. And like I said, it's like, it's like a magic show, you know, because I tried to set up the best as possible. So here's the decatria. And then you just, I'll move this out of the way. And boom, there is the hexagon shape that is sharing those vertices that I'm describing right at the center. And that will also be shared by the chestahedron. And there's the five-pointed star right in the middle, um, visually done, sculpturally done, in a really easy way for you to kind of uh, lift the veil here and see that internal structure of what's going on inside there. Um, so he sent that to me after I sent them, you know, the prior image in this, this image, because now we are going to tie this directly into uh, the seed of life and show how this form, the decatria and the chestahedron are integrally part of the flower of life. And not just like part of the flower of life, like you can draw them there, but I'm gonna show how they are like essential to making the flower of life actually have the life part. And this is what a lot of my videos have described a lot is that remember you, you can't draw the icosahedron just as it is. You can't draw the dodecahedron just in those petal array, even though it's posted everywhere. This is gonna give us the opportunity to do that. And I'm gonna to get to that and show you how that is. And it's in a way that I never knew would come about, but the decatria kind of got us, got me there, uh, you know, got, got us to this point. So here is the uh, decatria and it's so cool. And this was just kind of blew Frank and I away when we were discussing that, is that 
you could pretty much just in the seed of life here, here's the decatria in these lines. If you just don't add this little bit here on the backside, but this, if you just draw that hexagon all the way around, that's that shared central hexagon, remember? So that cube octahedron, now as I'm thinking about, the cube octahedron is in there. You know, the cube, okay, we got to process that, but I'll take that in. The cube octahedron is in there because this hexagon from this view is if you're looking at this, is that is the cube octahedron looking top down. This is a flat surface. These square faces are just you know going away from you. So there's the cube. If we make this into the cube, the cube is in the chestahedron as Frank has uh, shown. And uh, so anyway, so we got the we got the the cube octahedron and the hexagon face. And now what we're going to do to create the chest the decatria is now we incorporate phi, right? And this is what I mean. We can go on and build in this cube octahedron, octahedron cubes, uh, rhombic dodecahedrons, because that's what the flower of life does really, really well. It will build those out forever, you know? And, and just like the isotropic vector matrix that, you know, renowned physicist Nassim Harriman's discussing, you just keep doing, or Buckminster Fuller totally popularized the vector equilibrium, the cube octahedron here. It's a totally balanced, stable state. But now here's the here's the life. Here's how we infuse the life into this. And you know this this method here is so simple to get phi to divide the line into phi. In fact, I was like, why didn't I even know about this? And and I had to reference another book. And actually, yes, this is how you divide the line from central triangle into it. But the way that most books show you how to do this method is like you know do this, do that, do everything like that. No, all you have to do is draw the seed of life draw that central triangle all the way, you know, draw a circle around the seed of life like this, draw your line all the way through where the triangle would be, right? Where this triangle, the red one is, equilateral triangle, draw it, continue it till it touches the edge over here at A1, which is where the decatria point is, all the way down to D1, which is also where the other check decatria point is over here at D. And B and C, or B and C here, and that then gives you this triangle here for the cube octahedron, and this one here for the decatria, although this is flat, this comes to a point, right? So we're looking at this decatria from the vertex view as if we are looking uh, straight away down at it like that, right? So that's it, it fits right over it. And now we add the phi ratio to find these other outer points here. And the Superman faces, you're not gonna see because just like the, this there's the Superman face, you're not gonna see that because remember, those are, they're kind of sloping back and away towards the little equilateral triangle that's down at the bottom. So we're just not gonna see that from those view. I you know figured out the method so I could look through it. The drawing gets way too busy to have all those lines and all the little circles on there. It's all totally doable. But just as a solid view, that's what it looks like. And this is such an easy way to divide that line. And you know what? You're already, uh, there's the decatria. We've been looking at the decatria in the, these seed of life for eons. <laughs> it's been there the whole time, you know? And that's what just blew me away and, and, and I believe Frank away too. And it's been in there the whole time. Um, so, you know, here's the chestahedron, the little chestahedron. So decatria is the blue. And remember, it shares these edges with the, chesta, uh, with the chestahedron, which is in red. So this is vertex view. You're looking at the chestahedron straight away coming towards you like this. So the point is right up towards you. So you get that long sloping pentagonal face, which is usually like a star point flat. Um, so there's that other pentagon face of the decatria. Now remember, it breaks away at that point and creates the lower vertice down inside, which I showed you in the previous images. And remember, that vertice is going to share the little chestahedron, which is the dotted black down in there. So I put them all together. And that one just is, you know, floating out. And it's touching these uh, surfaces of the, of the chestahedron and the uh, decatria at this point here, because they share those points. Now you're gonna ask like, okay, well, yeah, cool. The, the chestahedron, uh, you know, the decatria, well, we find those points, but what do I do about, you know, this point over here? Like, how do I get the chestahedron from this? And well, let's describe what's going on there because the decatria, like I said, can 
it actually unites the form to the seed of life. Like you need the dual to connect it to the flower of life because as I described in my previous video, there's another method that needs to be done to create the chestahedron because this triangle, this dotted line equal hour triangle, remember that's the base of the chestahedron. And if you flip it over, it's gonna be a dotted line through that because of that sloping side there. So you won't see it, right? Cause that's kind of angling up and away. So, you know, that triangle and there's the other triangle. Now remember that triangle on a Pentagon face, that one is going across right here, right? So those are, those triangles are in phi relationship to one another. And at least in the phi version, the golden chestahedron version, those two have to be in phi relationship. And as I've demonstrated in a lot of other videos, the, um, the, the typical seed of life, flower of life pattern, you have to find the golden ratio in there, just as I showed. It doesn't just show up in that, right? So this is why I'm saying the chestahedron decatria are actually bringing the phi relationship to the flower of life fully and completely, kind of bringing it alive, pumping the heart energy into it. Because before what it did was build perfect hexagonal base structures um, of the cube, octahedron, tetrahedron, uh, et cetera, you know, rhombic, dodecahedron, all those, that's what it would do. But now we have that connection point to grow it out to the chestahedron. So this is the method, like I said, showing that. So that's how I did it for that video. But it became, um, let me see what I got going on here first. It, I got a simpler method, two slides that I discovered a few hours this morning. In fact, is the first thing I did this morning was kind of really, it came to me and I just put it right in the video that a more e simpler discovery than how I'm gonna show you here. Um, so, you know, the decatria and chestahedron are in the flower of life with these phi circles. And the orange sphere here is what it would look like around the chestahedron, okay? So that's the big orange sphere around the chestahedron. Um, and, you know, so if I'm looking straight down at the chestahedron here, you're gonna see all these little type of phi circles, all these phi circles, all these are in relationship to one another based on the phi ratio. Okay, and so what you need to do is you've got to draw all those little phi circles to get out to this point where the chestahedron is. So this is the flower of life, let's just say, with all made up of phi base circles. And I've got another image here in a second. So that seems like a lot of little circles to draw, but they'd all be in phi relationship. And you get to this point where you know, you've got the large circle and then you can draw the inner circle based on this method that I'm showing over here. All right, well, that's how I was doing it. And I think that's great. I mean, I think it creates this awesome pattern, right? And this is to me, the, uh, the new flower of life, the K-N-E-W flower of life, new and new flower of life, N-E-W, because this now brings the phi relationship into the flower of life, which before it was hidden, let's just say, you know, it was there and the decatria revealed it. And now I was always like, well, how do I integrate all the other drawings that I'm doing into the full, full spectrum of the flower of life in a very full and complete way? So the awesome thing here is when I did this whole build out here, I had the red circle, the blue circle and the red circles, right? And then what happens is when you do all those in five relationship, well, look at these little circles that happen to show up in the middle, right? So now there's actually three circles showing up in each of these, one, two, and three. Well, guess what? That one is also in five relationship to this circle. And this circle is in five relationship to that circle. So the whole thing is just like a unified five relationships going on still within the, 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 the flower of creation pattern, you know, the flower of life pattern, which many, 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 many forms are in, is all right here. And we can also draw the chestahedron, the, the dodecahedron and the icosahedron. So in this, you know, you'll, here's a new way to envision this, right? Here, here are all the platonic solids, including the dodecatria, I mean, I mean the uh, chestahedron and the de decatria, decatria could be in there. I included the rhombic dodecahedron here because that's a, a form that I just talked about for the dynamic stable steady state of the universe video because that's actually a compound of the cube and octahedron. It basically looks like a cube turned upside down, but that's eluded our consciousness for like 
eons as well, that basically all these could also be rhombic dodecahedron and they all fit together into this superstructure of rhombic dodecahedron that I built, you know, and you could just build it out. So if you're interested in that, watch the dynamic steady state of the universe video. That was by Conrad Ranzen's work. And it was an exciting week for me, let's just say, because I also sent Conrad that video. And what do you know? He replied to, and he said, wow, that is really cool. You know, I'm looking forward to look, getting into this a little bit more. So, you know, not only to talk to Frank this week, I got to talk to uh, at least email correspond with uh, Conrad. And it sounds like he's got some amazing work coming together on the whole geometry of the universe, uh, geometric structure of the universe, which we know is at all scales. Um, so here's the image. And now this is that same little pattern that I showed you previously here of all these circles. I've, you know, kind of made it uh, lighter in the background here so we could just focus on the tetrahedron, right? So that's easy in there. The octahedron is quite easy in there. Rhombic dodecahedron is also easy. You know, the cube, also easy. All easy. We can draw them all in the flower of life as is, no problems. We could draw them endlessly into infinity. Like I've been saying from like five, 10 videos ago, uh, the icosahedron just on that pattern and the dodecahedron are not gonna be lawful as Frank would say based on that. So we have to introduce another method of doing that. And what I've discovered, maybe someone else will discover another method is to start to incorporate those little phi base circles to divide the, just like Frank's first drawing. That's why I said, Frank was really starting the wave of this revolutionary, revolutionizing of sacred geometry, which is gonna have this trickle down effect to a lot of the forms we've been doing. Maybe they'll be inscribing this into the temple of whatever in the future, right? <laughs> Maybe they'll be inscribing this pattern in there, you know? And that's the, that's the pattern we're gonna have in, in the future. Because why, why not, right? Because don't we wanna have uh, the ability to draw the icosahedron and the dodecahedron, which, you know, I'd have to zoom in, but this little petal that you see right here is what divides the line to get the outer shapes of the dodecahedron here. It's just around there. So all you have to do is draw a hexagon around this dodecahedron and bam, you've got the dodecahedron in the middle. And uh, you, you, in fact, you don't just have it in the middle. Every single one of these vertices, right? I can draw any of these anywhere on this whole template not just one dodecahedron that we draw all of Metatron's cube and everything else and do all these lines and then just put a smack in the middle and then that's it. No, we can, we can build the icosahedron in this spot. I could build the tetrahedron here. I could build the decahedron here and bring it all back home. Well, here's the chestahedron too, right? It's part of the mix and it gets you there, right? It brings you to that phi base circle. And, and what, do I, what do I mean by that? Well, that's this morning's discover. How does it bring you to it? Because I'm going to demonstrate in these next few little slides how that's going to how that could work out like that. Um, let me just see here. Okay, so this is the next slide. So, uh, so this morning, first thing I woke up with on my mind was well, well, this here, right? Um, I wanted to discover uh, what was going on along this edge here. So I just drew. So here's the decatria. Here's the chestahedron, and I just connected this line over here. Okay, so that's connecting point to point within the decatria. And then I just drew from that triangular point, I drew these lines across, right? Then it made the central triangle. So there's the cube octahedron shape, right? I've already talked about the cube octahedron. So we kind of create the cube octahedron in there. And essentially what I did was I drew these lines on there. And I decided to just figure out, well, what's the relationship between these lines? Well, they're all phi based relationship lines. So this is another hexagon. It's, it's a golden hexagon number three, because this is a golden hexagon that I didn't do before. What I did was two other versions of the golden hexagon. So this is the third version, which is also down here in the decatria, because when you connect these corners of the decatria, the decatria, you put them around and you'll get the outer shape. And then now we have that central shape, which is where they go up. Um, to create the vertice. But now what we've got going on here is we've got phi relationship because we've got this whole length, which is C. And that is, whoop, that is to, uh, so A, well, let's start with this because this is my formula. A, which is the blue, those little equilateral triangles is uh, as to B, which is the red. 
right? So those are in phi relationship as the B is in relationship to C. So we've been talking about the regular hexagon with all equal edges, and now we've just completely worked with the decatria in a way that creates this hexagon shape in the middle, which is all based on phi ratio hexagon. Um, so, you know, this was the little discovery here that I was, you know, I put to, to get the length to make sure that red line is the length of that red line. You know, standard technique is you draw a square, you take this diagonal here, which is going to be half of the root five, and then you swing that arc down, and then that gives you the length. So that red is to that length. So we know that that is part of the, uh, part of the form. Uh, and the phi is based completely on it. Now, just I'm gonna illustrate one little thing here. When I did this red line, this kind of purplish circle right here, I was like, wow, did it just hit the outer sphere? Because that's the outer sphere that's around the chestahedron, which would mean that when you arc that over, phi relationship goes right to the outer sphere. And I was like really, really happy. I drew a tangent line and all of a sudden I noticed like a little wiggle to it, just this ever so slight wiggle. And so I did check it out. And why would I, why would I show you kind of like a, a negative result? You know, it's not really a negative result to me at all. It's a totally a positive result for many reasons. Because that's, you know, that wasn't really like part of the seed of life and all these concentric circles. It would have been just a nice synchronicity. And like, you know, Frank and I were working on something and like, you just can't have it all, you know, like you want everything to match up perfectly and just be totally lined up. But here's the red circle, which would be the, uh, the uh, actual circle of the sphere that goes around the chestahedron. And here's the blue one, which actually happens to be that line that is just about kissing it. I mean, it's so close. And Frank and I had a discussion, maybe it's within that 0 0.003 plus or minus difference. I mean, it's, it's a really close difference to being touching that. So that, that to me is a, a plus. But the, the, the thing is like, well, why would I post this? I could have just thrown it out and not shown this at all and because it didn't all work out. I'm just showing you that like the amount of integrity to make sure that this is a kind of lawful connection that when it gets passed on, I could cheat this and just say, wow, look at, they just line up. It's close, it's close enough. Uh, and it's not about being perfect. It's just about being um, true to what's, what we're doing here with sacred geometry. So this little, this little difference here, but even a cell, like, you know, a, a cell in the body, it has an inner membrane and an outer membrane with a very minute little difference between them for what type of cell it is. So to me, it's just like, oh, well, maybe we got an inner outer membrane or maybe it's within that little ratio that's uh, good enough a difference, whatever. But it just illustrates the amount of integrity that all these drawings have gone that I've done here and any mistakes that would be in them would just totally be an error that I've made somewhere along them. Um, but I double check and triple, I have to track every, check everything multiple times, seven or more times, just to make sure that what being presented here is right on. So, okay, so we got the golden hexagon. So now what is, what is that going to do for us? Well, it's going to do a lot because now we've got a, a, a new method to draw the chestahedron totally easily. And like, it's a 10 minute drawing. You know, it's a 10 minute drawing. We can do this whole thing because we draw our seed of life and I've done it right here. You'll see in a moment, we draw our seed of life. And, you know, we, we draw in the decatria, like I've showed, we, you know, we, we extend the lines out to create off that triangle to get those outer points on this circle. And then now we go through this point and then we draw the line, right? Cause we got to finish off that decatria line anyway. Well, what happens if we just extend that line all the way? And what happens if we just extend that line all the way? And same here and same here and same here. So as we extend those lines, well, they cross at some point, right? Well, what do you know? That's exactly where the base of the triangle is for the chestahedron. Bingo, right? That was like this morning's discovery, two to three hours before I'm presenting now, that just made this so simplistic and easy because that does a lot. And I'm going to show you how that does a lot because here's the seed of life. Great, we got the decatria. Now we're out to this outer circle. 
Now, all we have to do is create the phi based circle. Because remember, this circle is going to be in relationship to a phi based circle, which completes the inner point of the chestahedron, which is right here, right? Which we also have. So, this decatria, this line is so important and is right in the seat of life, right there the whole time. Because all you got to do is extend it to here and extend it to here. And then you just created the inner circle that's in phi relationship to the outer one, right? So if that inner circle or the outer circle is one, that inner circle is gonna be 0.618. And to me, that just uni that united both the forms together. It united both methods that I've been working with together, which is the flower of life and this other method. And now that does this, right? So right from the seed of life, we draw the decatria with the method I just showed you easily before. We bring it out here and we extend that line all the way through. And now the magic happens because now, now that not only does decatria as it showed before connect to the cube octahedron underlying, but when you actually draw the icosahedron, it actually is the same outline from above of the chestahedron. So this is the chestahedron underneath this, right? I mean, the point of the chestahedron would probably be popping through this because they share different dimensions, but in 2D, it's another form we've been looking at. And of course, most of the drawings we see of icosahedron are, are incorrect, but it's another, um, it's another view that the chestahedron shares and the red lines just continue up to show where the chestahedron is right over top of the icosahedron. And the only way, or not only way, but this way, like a really great way, I believe, to draw the icosahedron correctly is, you know, you have to have these two phi-based relationship circles because the icosahedron is totally based on phi. So, you know, and that represents the element of water. So like water and ether in our flower of life as it existed was not a part of the makeup. <laughs> We've just introduced the chestahedron, the decatria, the dodecahedron, and the icosahedron, uh, I, I don't know if I repeated which ones, but you know, all those forms that are based on phi right into the mix, all based on the seed of life. And you don't have to draw, let me just back up over here, every single one of these little circles. You can, because it's a beautiful pattern in and of its own, and you can do this little build out here. But right from this, you draw the seed of life, make these couple steps, you got the chestahedron, you get those lines and there you're off and running to the icosahedron and the uh, dodecahedron because all you have to do as I showed in prior videos there is, is just uh, once again you just extend the line of the decatria line continue that all the way over and it's going to intersect the points where you draw the outer edges of the de decahedron and then that will create the compound of the uh, rhombic triacontahedron, which is like the fusion form. And all the platonic solids are in this, including the de decatria, decatria and the chestahedron. So this is just like a big, big win-win situation all the way around. I mean, it shows that Frank's work and wanting to introduce another platonic solid or something similar to a platonic solid. It's not going to observe all the things. It has the equal areas, you know. Uh, but it's going to introduce a whole nother form that has been integrated fully in front of us in these forms. It just was a matter of just connecting the lines and actually creating the form, pulling it out, going through the process, awesome process he went through to create this amazing 3D form. And it just wasn't like um, a whimsical uh, a dash of creativity or anything like that, you know? It was a real process that integrated to the root foundation of sacred geometry to its fullest uh, extent, right? So, you know, that, that's just a huge undertaking to go through and to see how it overlaps and integrates to all these things. So here's my quick drawing that I did. Literally took me about five to 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes when I just marked it up. And I didn't even try to like go slow at it or like, you know, make it like super meditative, which would have been awesome. I was just like, let me just see what happens. You know, I'll just draw the seed of life. I'll do the lines. I'll bring it out. Look, I did two lines there. I had to readjust. It's just, it's all my little, as I like to call them, little spirit stitches, you know, things that add to the, the humanness of what I've done here, rather than all the perfect straight lines to just integrate it in that way. And here's that 
golden hexagon that's at the bottom and also the other you know equal edge hexagon is also in there and you know there's the phi base circle there's the inner circle that is all in phi relationship so we've got the seed of life encompassed into the phi based relationship circles what a like uh fusion of like all my interests you know <laughs> that have come together in this drawing and after i did the drawing you notice this this light the actual the rainbow colors of light uh i happened to pick up the drawing and just hold it back my desk is at a window i got a little crystal hanging up in the window held it back and bam right at that spot you know you know within that triangle was there was this uh rays of light right through the middle and that's just like your signature stamp of good job <laughs> you know that nice you, that, that, good job you know it's like Mark, marked with the marked with the light, right? The rainbow colors of the spectrum going right through the middle. So, um, let me just show that to you. Uh, you know, what's that? Then had the little ray of light there, but hopefully that image stuck out to you. So there it is, fully integrated into the seed of life. Like I said, such a simple, easy drawing to do, and that chestahedron will bring you, and the decatria brings you out to the two relationship circles in a way that doesn't require doing all this like we'll measure here and move this here it's just built into the design um so yeah I, i'm just really uh thrilled here's the horizontal line there's the hexagon here that i was talking about uh here's the decatria that has been constructed you know just uh you know making little forms this one's just the, the chestahedron in the wire view I haven't made the decatria one yet so yeah, that was um, a full on video. I hope you've uh, stuck with that and appreciated everything that I shared in there. Um, I really do believe that, you know, as Frank started this wave and the geometers have been working on these types of things for centuries, um, that we still are growing in sacred geometry. There's much more to discover within those patterns, you know, with this phi based integration. It's like, that's a starting place. This isn't like an ending. It isn't like, oh, now we figured out all that stuff and how that connects. There's more patterns and more forms, more things waiting in there to be discovered and additional circles to be added to grow it out in any way, you know, and just trust our intuition and our instincts and follow that, uh, it, 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 that guidance that, that comes to us um, and work on the drawings, you know, build the forms and, you know, make sure it has a kind of integrity and a kind of lawfulness that, you uh, Frank is uh, discussing, and uh, what a great uh, sacred geometry of uh, the future that uh, is being presented. And Frank, like I said, you know, he was just way ahead of his time. So it really, you know, tickles me to see that he's uh, with the five base circles, with the five pentagons, and how the decatria integrates all this stuff. Uh, I'm just so thankful to have had the opportunity to be part of that process. I'm really grateful for to Frank for. Uh, being open to share uh, his insights and wisdom with, with all of uh, the world and humanity here, and that I've just happened to be curious enough to go with it and take it a little bit further. And then all through the process that I've been going through, all the little tests that I've gone through, putting all the platonic solids in the spheres, you know, figuring out how to do all these drawings, figuring out all the phi circles and how it doesn't fit into the flower of life, they all just kind of came together. Um, so this is definitely one of my uh, most enjoyable uh, videos. I love all my videos, but this one really brought it together in a real heartfelt way. And how could it not? Because it's totally about the Chestahedron. It's about that L-O-V-E, uh, the big love and the heart and our earth and all beating as one. So yeah, much love to everyone. And uh, thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for uh, more down the future. And uh, I'm, I'll be happy to be back on here, Sharon. All right, much love. See ya.